afternoon and welcome to our third video webinar hosted by Orion and the Canadian Internet Registration Authority, or CIRA. My name is Brad Gray, Director of Business Development and Strategic Alliances at Orion. Today, we're going to be learning about Orion's new service offering with CIRA, the DZone Anycast DNS service. DZone is a resilient DNS solution which protects you against DNS DDoS attacks. DZone is available free of charge to all Orion connected institutions. So here's a general outline of our hour together. We'll hear from Mark O'Day over at CIRA. Then we'll hear some case studies of institutions that have already adopted DZone, including Carleton University, Waterloo Regional District School Board, and the City of Hamilton. So during the presentation, please feel free to post any questions throughout, and we'll address them during the Q&A section. Once again, Orion and CIRA have partnered together to provide DZone Anycast DNS service to all Orion members. So without further delay, I will hand it over to Mark to begin our presentation. Thanks, Brad. Um, welcome to the webinar and thanks a lot for attending. My name is uh, Mark Cadet and I'm a product manager at CIRA for DNS products. And the focus of today's talk is going to be on DNS and how you can make your DNS more resilient with, with uh, DZone and to avoid DNS outages and uh, DNS-based DDoS attacks. Uh, so first I'm just going to go through uh, a bit of the overview of, of DZone and then jump into how, how it can be implemented and the steps you need to take. So first, uh, we, one of the first careers I had was with a startup called Isotro. We developed one of the first DNS and DHCP IP address management products. And we sold that company back in 1997. So I've had a long history in DNS. And what's interesting is that since 1997, not a lot has changed in the world of DNS. The technology is still the same. The problem being solved is still the same. But one of the main differences is that the importance of uh, the DNS has really increased. So the number of applications that require DNS to operate and the importance of your external uh, internet presence and all of the applications that are accessed on your network via the internet and, and by DNS. Uh, if your DNS is out, you basically disappear from the internet, and it's a major, major outage. The other thing that's very different as well is uh, DDoS attacks. So this uh, this screen shows an application from Arbor Networks, a screen capture from June 8th of this year, and you can see Canada on the upper left in a large red streak hitting it, and it's showing DDoS attacks originating from China and hitting Canada. And I know all of the organizations within Orion face the challenge of uh, denial of service attacks and security attacks. And increasingly, the DNS is becoming both a target for DDoS attacks as well as an attack vector. So DNS has become much more important and, and much more uh, under attack uh, from denial of service attacks. Uh, but one of the things that is interesting, a stark reality, is that most organizations haven't, don't have a strong inter, uh, DNS infrastructure and are exposed to outages, either from lack of redundancy or lack of uh, just basic good infrastructure network access uh, redundancy. So before I go into DZone in a little bit more detail, I'll just take a step back and explain uh, a little bit, give you a little bit of an overview of CIRA. So CIRA is the Canadian Internet Registration Authority. We are we manage the .ca domain space for Canada. Uh, at this point, there's almost 2.4 million domain names registered. And as part of operating uh, .ca, we operate the DNS for .ca and do all the root uh, name server servers for .ca. Uh, at this point, we answer almost 3 billion queries per month. Uh, so DNS is a strong part of our expertise, and we spend a lot of time monitoring and providing a, a strong DNS infrastructure for .ca. Uh, CIR is a not-for-profit, and we're operated by, overrun by a 12-person board, uh, which is elected by our members, who are owners of .ca domain names. Uh, we have, at this point, 75 employees. Uh, some of the other things we do that are of interest to organizations in Orion are we uh, we're focused on DNS or sorry internet uh, technologies that 
would improve the Canadian internet. So we we are a strong proponent of IPv6. Uh, we are also involved in DNSSEC, and we've spent a lot of time over the past few years trying to develop the internet exchange points in Canada, and are a strong proponent of them. And all of our gear is located in internet exchange points in Canada. We also fund some uh, research projects at, uh, at Canadian academic institutions uh, related to the internet, as well as internet-related projects with not-for-profits across Canada. So just to summarize here, we manage the .ca domain name, uh, provide in infrastructure and the services required to support .ca, and we also have a mandate to do good things for the internet in Canada. So I'm going to shift the focus now and talk more about DZone, which is available to all the Orion members. Uh, so just before we go into that, uh, DNS is a mission critical service. So without DNS, uh, you lose access to your websites, web applications, emails. Um, a DNS outage is, can be very costly from both a financial uh, perspective, depending on the type of company and how your uh, website is used. As well, uh, damage to reputation is usually quite high if your internet access is down based on a, a DNS outage. The other aspect of DNS is that it contributes to website performance. So there's a couple of interesting uh, facts on website loading that can be affected by DNS. So 40% of people will abandon a website after only three seconds if it doesn't load initially. Um, Amazon did a research project where they added a one-second increase in page time load and calculated based on that they'd re lose $1.6 in revenue per year based on people leaving pages. Google actually inserted a 400 millisecond delay in returning search results and they found that they would get 8 million less searches per day. So probably a little different... Uh, you would have different results for this, but the general message is that DNS does the initial lookups to an authoritative server to look up your web presence does add delay to loading a web page. So latency and performance of DNS can be important. As important as the DNS is, uh, it's quite vulnerable to failures and firstly just basic network failures. So power outages, equipment failures, routers, switches. Um, as well, now 10% of all attacks, denial of service attacks, is, are in, involve the DNS, both as an attack vector or this, the destination of the attack. And performance can be an issue with DNS. If you have high latency, it will add to uh, delay in loading websites and web applications. The way to strengthen DNS is with a technology called Anycast. So with Anycast, you can take a group of uh, globally distributed DNS servers and have them share a single IP address. So you have a cloud of DNS servers which appear as a single IP address. At layer three, queries are routed to the uh, closest name server based on BGP hops. Um, if a server fails, it's automatically removed from the routing table and queries will be routed to another server. So the real strong benefits of Anycast are redundancy. So you have lots of servers appearing as a single IP address. If one fails, it's automatically routed around. Uh, you get load distribution, so you get the aggregate capacity of the cloud of servers rather than a single unicast name server with a single IP address. Uh, and with that, you also, with that aggregate capacity, you get the ability to absorb denial of service attacks. Uh, <coughs> Anycast has been used at the top level for the root domains for more than 10 years. We've been using it for .ca for uh, several years as well. And, but the challenges with Anycast is it's expensive to set up and operate. You know, there's high capital costs to distribute servers in data centers around the world, uh, buy bandwidth for them, and they're complex to configure. Um, 
there are commercial offerings. One of the things a few years ago we looked at Canada and there weren't really any any cast DNS services with infrastructure focused on Canada. So at that point we were upgrading our .ca name server infrastructure and we decided to uh, expand our .ca service and make it a, a layer of it available to commercial organizations inside Canada. And that's where DZone came from. <coughs> This uh, slide shows a map of uh, where our D-Zone locations are. So we have two clouds. So each of these clouds would appear as a, a single DNS name server with one IP address. Uh, you can see Cloud One has servers, servers all over the world, uh, servers across Canada located at high quality data centers with connectivity into internet exchange points. Uh, we also have large international sites you can see in Miami, Los Angeles, London, and Hong Kong. Each of these sites outside of Canada has 10 gigabits of internet transit just for DNS servers, as well as a 10 gigabit connection into an internet exchange point. So high capacity, high bandwidth. Uh, each of those sites has a router with that load balances um, traffic to two DNS servers sitting behind it plus a third server is there for uh, statistics as well as a backup in case one of those servers fails. So we have a high level of redundancy uh, at each location. Each of the clouds uses a separate transit provider. So uh, Cloud One uses Hurricane Electric, whereas Cloud Two uses uh, Pier One for transit. Uh, the, the, the one site in London is a little bit different than the others. There we use a uh, service called IXReach, which is basically a VLAN connectivity service to internet exchange points across Europe. So uh, from London, we actually have a virtual port at six different internet exchanges in Europe. So uh, we get very fast performance uh, for queries that originate in Europe. So one of the benefits of this architecture is that you get low latency for your DNS lookups. If a lookup originates in Europe, it's going to be answered at the, the name server in London. Uh, so you get servers, uh, queries answered very close to where they originate and will be much faster. The other benefit is that is when it comes to DDoS attacks. So the majority of denial of service attacks originate outside of Canada. So if there's a large denial of service attack against the DNS service that originates in Asia, it's going to be routed to the Hong Kong name server. If it exceeded 10 gigabits per second there, that's, that site would start to go down. Uh, at that point, the traffic would be rerouted to London or probably Los Angeles. Uh, the site in Hong Kong would start to come back up. So you kind of get a... Uh, a a whack-a-mole kind of effect where the traffic will rotate around. At that point, none of that traffic would be routed to servers in Canada, so we would maintain our service levels uh, across Canada and still answering queries. So it's very difficult to take down on any cast cloud. You'd need a distributed attack, and as well, we with two any cast clouds, we would have to have it attacking both. So the aggregate bandwidth across the, the service at this point is in excess of 80 gigabits. And as well with the internet exchange points, if our internet uh, transit is flooded, we also maintain connectivity with peering network, networks that we peer with at the internet exchange points. So at this point, we peer with over uh, 1,600 partners across the world or different networks. Uh, just a note about where the value of using DZone when it comes to denial of service attacks. So it has a direct value when you take into account if there's an attack on a DNS server. So you could, on your network, face a denial of service attack against your name servers. If someone was successful in taking out your name servers, um, you would lose act. Your DNS would be down and you would basically drop off the internet. When it comes to an attack on a web server or another application or your network in general, uh, the value of DZone is a little bit different there. What it does is it moves your DNS 
answering capability off your network. So if your network was flooded and under attack, um, your DNS would still be up. We would be DZone would be answering the queries for your net for your DNS. And the value of that is that you can still look up, you might have applications that don't reside into your inside your network that may still be accessible during a denial of service attack and you'd want your DNS to be accessible. As well, there's an impact on mail. So if you're flooded, your network's under attack and you can't your DNS servers are not accessible then no one could do an MX lookup. And if MX lookups completely fail, some mail applications will, will drop mail rather than queue it for later delivery. Uh, that was an, there was an actual attack on Carleton University where their motivation to move to an external DNS like DZone was based on that. They wanted their DNS to be operational even if their network was completely flooded. Um, so the value DZone has is that we, we, we move the DNS traffic off of your network and we are the responsible for mitigating attacks. And we have some built in, the first line of defense is the aggregate bandwidth and query capacity of, of the two DNS uh, Anycast clouds that we have. And the other we do have mitigation strategies so once we are under attack. Uh, with DZone, we have a 100% uptime SLA for DNS queries. So at this point, the service has been operational for one year now, and we have not had any outages that have affected our ability to answer DNS queries. Uh, we do have a web interface that we turn off and on for maintenance uh, periodically to do updates. Uh, we have redundancy in both the clouds, transit providers, redundancy at each location, multiple servers, uh, sitting behind a load balancer. Uh, we are, if there are failures, nodes are able to drop out at the Anycast level and are removed from the routing table in seconds and don't impact service. Um, as well, we monitor the DZone service with the same uh, personnel and same tools that we do for the .ca name servers. And they're monitored 24-7. Every aspect of the service that can be monitored is. Uh, this slide just shows uh, some of the organizations that have been using uh, DZone. So you can see there's some Orion members in there, uh, Carleton, Queens, McMaster, um, Windsor Essex Catholic School Board, Waterloo Regional District School Board as examples. As well, we have a, a few other municipalities as well as the province of Nova Scotia, uh, several hosting companies. And uh, these have all been added since uh, February of last year. Uh, before I go into the details of how the service is implemented, let's take a minute to talk a little bit about some of the other features that we'll be adding to the product over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, one is domain name security. So one of the uh, risks around owning a domain name is domain name hijacking. So this happens when someone breaks into a registrar uh, and changes the name server records for your domain. So this happened last year with the City of Ottawa and the Ontario government where someone was able to compromise the registrar's network or did social engineering to hack into the registrar's network. They updated the, the name server records to point to a different name server and we're answering queries that redirected everyone to a malicious website. For City of Ottawa, they had, for a day, their website was a dancing banana. And uh, for the province of Ontario, their whole website, Ontario.ca, pointed to uh, an MC Hammer video. You can't mm. touch this. So highly embarrassing, but one of the ways uh, to protect against that is, uh, it's called registry lock. So at the registry and .ca level, you can specify to have a domain completely locked so uh, no one can make changes to it electronically. You can't update contact records or name servers unless you unlock it. And um, what we're gonna do is within DZone, give you the ability to select the domains you own that you want to lock 
and we will lock them in the in the registry so it would basically block out any changes uh, and make them more secure if you want to make a change then you would go into D zone and unlock them uh, there's currently a, a, a service available but it's only available through registrars at this point uh, we would make it available directly in D zone another one uh, related to security is uh, providing the ability to do uh, DNSX signing of zones and make a complete turnkey service so with this we would do a zone transfer receive your zone sign it we would do all of the management of keys so we would generate the DNSSEC keys we would update them in the .ca registry so they're they're available at the .ca level and could do complete management of that for you so basically you would check off the zones you want signed using DNSSEC and we would do the complete management of that um, the next two bullets refer to some uh, other product areas that we're, we're considering. Content filtering is providing a recursive DNS server uh, that's basically a DNS firewall similar to OpenDNS and some other products like that where um, all of your internal DNS queries for users accessing things on the internet would go through this DNS server and you would be able to have policies on what content is available and what should be blocked and we're also looking in speaking with a lot of uh, educational organizations municipalities we see there's a need for a DDoS mitigation service and we're looking at some partnering with some companies to try to provide a solution uh, in this area so I'm going to shift gears now and talk about how uh, D zone is implemented so D zone is a is a secondary service so it's very low risk to implement it uses a standard zone transfer for us to receive information from you so the recommended steps we have for setting up D zone is to pick some test zones that uh, don't have a lot of traffic on or are not mission critical to you uh, configure those so you set up D zone to do a zone transfer of those zones you can verify that we're receiving D zone is receiving the zones uh, changes are being propagated uh, you could do queries against our name servers to verify be comfortable that everything's happening once you've completed that testing the next step would be to make D zone visible as the name servers for your zones and you do that by adding ns1 dzone.ca and ns2 dzone.ca at the registrar level so you'd have to log into your registrar and add these name server records to the zones that we're serving uh, you can monitor then you can monitor the traffic patterns and performance and decide at that point you probably want to move all your zones on uh, one of the things we do have if you have hundreds of zones we have customers with up to 5,000 domains uh, we can do a bulk upload for you uh, and get things configured very quickly uh, and then you can decide based on the traffic and you can keep your name servers uh, operational in parallel to DZone and see the distribution of queries between the, the servers and decide your final configuration if you want to make yours hidden and just have DZone answer the queries uh, this diagram shows the basic uh, provides a good visual for the configuration so if you start on the left that's your existing primary name servers so you would still keep your primary name servers you would do updates to DNS records on those what you need to do on those servers is allow zone transfers to our hidden masters and as well to allow notifies so as you go across our interface into you would be a zone transfer those go to our D zone hidden masters so they see the two IP addresses there as well the in D zone you use our web portal and there you would tell us what the addresses of your name servers are and what zones you want us to do zone transfers of and answer queries for uh, within D zone there's also a, a concept of zone owner that's basically a text field that you can group zones by uh, by department we do have a lot of hosting companies that um, provide D zone on behalf of customers so they group zones the zone owner in that case would be their customers uh, most universities or colleges 
cities just have a single zone owner. Then from the Hidden Masters, we have a whole software infrastructure, and we do have a, a different private address space where we move our DNS configuration files out to our the servers in the cloud. So there's uh, 12, 13 locations and 23 servers uh, in the cloud. Uh, and then the last step is, <clears throat> in order for queries to be directed to DZone, you need to add the name server records at the registrar level. So just a couple quick notes on the uh, zone transfer. Typically, your primary name servers will be behind a firewall, and you'll have to open up access to allow a zone, our name servers to reach your name servers to do a zone transfer. Um, as well, there's another uh, mechanism that can be used to provide an additional layer of security for zone transfers. It's called TSIG. It's, uh, basically a, a signature or a hashing. The signature is used to provide a hash on all the communications between uh, name servers so you can verify that you're actually doing a zone transfer to our name server and we can verify that the source of the zone we're receiving is valid. And we have maybe about a quarter of our customers right now are using TSIG. Uh, the zone transfer mechanism, there's two. It's AXFR or IXFR. AXFR is the full zone transfer where a complete zone's done. And there's also an incremental zone transfer. And those are supported on most uh, name servers. The way DZone is, in, is notified that a zone is updated and should do a, no, a zone transfer is with a notify. So your name servers will send us a notify indicating the zone's been updating. Uh, if we don't receive a notify, there's a timer called the refresh timer. When that timer expires, the DZone masters will contact uh, your name servers to check to see if the zone has changed. Uh, if that refresh or the fails, then there's another timer which is called the retry timer, just how long to wait before you'll go and ask for the zone again. Uh, the last one is the expiry timer. This, was, this is an important one if you're using DZone. Uh, in BIND or in DNS RFCs, the expiry timer, if you can't reach the, if a slave server can't reach the primary uh, for a period of time, then it will stop serving the zone. So this expiry timer is usually set for weeks. So there's not a situation where you'd want the zone to stop answering queries for your zone. We've had some customers with this uh, misconfigured down to an hour. So that would mean if, for some reason, uh, we lost network connectivity between our name servers and yours, that we would stop serving the zone. So just need to make sure that this is set to at least a week. And we, at for Sierra, I think we set our, our expiry to five weeks. Uh, one of the things we do with the important part of uh, our interface into the customer is the zone transfer process. So. We constantly monitor the zone transfers. Uh, we check the serial numbers on your zones, on our hidden masters, and on all of the, uh, the cloud name servers to make sure they're synchronized. We also capture the uh, bind messages from our name servers and make those accessible through the user interface so you can see um, messages related to the zone transfers between our name servers and yours. And within the user interface, I'll show a screenshot. You'll see the status of the zone transfer. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just going to, the next few slides, I'll show a few screenshots that give examples of uh, different customers that are using DZone right now. Carleton University, so their primary name servers are on an I, IP address management platform called Infoblox. And we do a zone transfer from two Infoblox box and they, the, those uh, Infoblox uh, DNS servers also answer queries and are visible publicly in addition to the two DZone clouds. And they have both forward and reverse uh, zones uh, served by DZone. Uh, the next one is Waterloo Regional District School Board. They use only DZone to answer the public queries for their, their domains and their current name server is hidden now. So that means that it's not advertised 
and doesn't answer queries. Its purpose now is just to do zone transfers to D zone. So that means it will have less uh, requirement for for availability. If it went down, uh, you would have lot. They would have time to to bring it back up, and the only impact would be they wouldn't be able to do updates to their their domains during that outage. Uh, the last one listed is the city of Hamilton. They had two Windows name servers that do zone transfers to D zone and answer queries. Uh, this shows a screenshot of when you log into uh, to D zone. This is the zone page, and this is the zone page for Carleton University. And starting at the left, you see the zones that are listed. So they're doing an IPv6 uh, reverse zone, as well as an IPv4 reverse zone, and then the main zone, carlton.ca. Uh, there's a status column, which is green, meaning we're doing zone transfers and all the serial numbers are in sync. Um, it lists the two name servers that we're doing zone transfers from, the service type, which is education premium, which all the Orion customers will get. It just defines how many domains you can put on the service and how many queries. And for Orion members, it's 500 domains and unlimited queries. Uh, there's also a last provisioning state, which if you had updated this zone would show the success or if there happened to be an error with a, an update. Uh, the customer, that's a field, internal field. I'm, this screenshot I'm logged in as a Sierra user, so you see a few extra things. There's a zone check where you can do, ex, this does external queries to all of our name servers and just verifies for you that we're answering queries for your zones. And then the view lets you update the configuration for a zone. Um, this next screen shows if you clicked on the status button, the, we saw they were green here, and it lists your name servers. So Carleton University has two name servers, but they have both, have both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. And we do zone transfers, or we'll try to do zone transfers from um, each IP address and each name server. And in this case, we've queried, and you can see the list of serial numbers for the Carlton name servers, the list of serial numbers for DZone, and then grayed out. This is not usually visible to customers, but it shows the uh, serial numbers for all of the cloud name servers. And we run this process every 30 minutes. So it's not, if you did happen to see things out of sync, it may be a timing issue. So there's a refresh button on the uh, zone list where you can update this status real time. As well, if you go into the view of a zone, you can retrieve the transfer history. So this is for the city of Hamilton. Uh, we're answering queries for hamiltonpolice.on.ca. And this is all of the we take the messages from the name D process, store them in a Splunk database, and then retrieve them by zone. So this just gives you, if there was an issue, you could go and uh, check the log messages to see what the what's happening on the zone transfer. If a zone transfer is failing, or we notice that one of your name servers not reachable, uh, we'll do some checks and and contact customers directly to let them know. Uh, you can also, there's also a traffic page. So this shows the uh, DNS traffic for the Waterloo Regional District School Board. Uh, the different colors are the queries that are answered at different locations. So you can see all of the, each of our name servers or name server sites are a different color. Um, and you could select by location and view for a specific location. But you can see even for, um, the Waterloo School Board, there are queries answered all across the world. So they're originating. The bottom blue is for our queries answered in Hong Kong. Um, the light purple are queries answered in, in Europe. So you'd be surprised at the origin of DNS queries for your domains. Uh, the next, this was for November 23rd. And you can just see, sometimes you'll see different spikes in traffic. Um, this is on November 26. At 7 in the morning, there was a large spike for DNS lookups for, 
for the Waterloo Regional District School Board. And I'm not sure why that happened, but could have been weather and people were seeing if buses were available. Uh, but you'll be able to drill down and see, uh, get an a, idea of the patterns for your DNS queries. So just to summarize some of the key reasons why you would should implement DZone is fault tolerance and redundancy. So with the two Anycast clouds, you get we can pretty much guarantee 100% uptime for your DNS. Higher performance, we'll be answering queries at name servers that are typically closer to where the queries are originating, so they'll be much faster. Uh, it moves the DNS queries off your network. Even for Waterloo Regional District School Board, they get more than a million queries per month. Carleton uh, averages, th I think, close to a, uh, 30 million queries per month. So it moves that traffic off your network. You could have the option to make your name servers hidden and so they don't answer any queries and are not exposed to any security risks. Uh, one of the things we do as well is we have a, uh, an agreement with ISC, a uh, support agreement for bind with ISC. So two weeks before any security uh, issues with bind are announced, we receive a uh, security update and are able to test it and implement it before any of those um, security uh, announcements are made. So we, we do that 100%. All security updates are tested and implemented um, as soon as possible. It's the same process we use for .ca. You'll get some uh, DOS resiliency as far as your DNS goes, so we can absorb a ton of queries, a ton of traffic, and uh, keep running. Uh, it's really easy to implement, setting up a secondary. Uh, most organizations already have some master slave or primary secondary setup. It's a standard DNS zone transfer. Uh, you don't have to change the way you administer your DNS. You still update the records as you do. It's paid for, so you can take advantage of uh, Orion's providing the service for all of the members. And downside, there's a uh, haven't encountered any yet. <laughs> uh, with each Orion member, we provide 24-7 technical support. So 8 to 8, we have an op someone will answer the support calls live. Uh, after hours, we use a pager service. So someone, the call will be directed to one of our technical support team. Uh, and you'll get a call back within 30 minutes. What we do, what's important to note is that we monitor the service 24-7 and we should be, we will detect any issues before you. And to date, you know, we have ha not had any outages that would affect our ability to answer DNS queries, which is where the 100% uptime is focused. Uh, and what we would classify an emergency is if you're queries aren't being answered for your domain or zone, and if you're not able to reach the portal. So for the most part, we, we have not received any emergency calls. Uh, we're monitoring the service 24-7, and we'll be proactive to, uh, to events related to your zone transfer. So we'll contact you if uh, we lose network connectivity to your zones or if uh, for some reason, the configuration on your name server has changed and we can't do a zone transfer. Um, some contacts will provide you with contacts to escalate if you have any issues. Um, just This last slide just summarizes uh, the steps for implementing DZone. So you can contact uh, Biz Development at Orion and let them know you're interested. There's a software license agreement which we'll provide to you. So each Orion member has a, a service level agreement with CIRA that outlines the service they're entitled to and the support you, you'll receive. Uh, we can do a 10 to 15 minute quick uh, call with you to just go through the details of implementing again if you need that. Uh, we provide you with an account on DZone to the web portal uh, where you can log in and set up your your configuration. Uh, the next steps would be, you know, enable your zone, your name servers to do zone transfers to DZone. 
uh, do the configuration inside the portal, and then add DZone as authoritative servers for your zone at the registrar level. So it's pretty straightforward. Can take from should take less than an hour, uh, and could be even quicker. At this point, we could switch to questions. Uh, so we've got a, a, a couple of questions online. Uh, how many users, how many user accounts can a, can a member have, and are there different access roles? So within DZone, we have um, full administrator rights, so someone who can create name servers and zones inside the portal. As well, there's uh, configuration only, so even there might be some users you don't want to create a name server, but you would allow them to add new zones. So there's a that level of uh, access, and then there's read only, and there's no limit to how many users you could have. Um, <clears throat> I've got another question on. What's the propagation delay for DNS updates to be pushed out to the Anycast servers? Uh, if you make a change, we receive a notify. We push the new zone configuration out to the servers. That takes, it's in the matter of seconds, so less than 10 seconds. If you add a new zone, for it to be pushed out to the, our name servers is in the seconds as well. So it's near real time. Another question about the SLA, it's basically, um, as Orion members, you're entitled to the 100% uptime SLA, and uh, so far we, we've we been knock on wood, we've had no outages and expect that to continue. The service is architected with Anycast to be able to um, be resilient to failures and denial of service attacks. Okay. Uh, another question, do we provide fully hosted DNS solution that would not require for the customer to maintain or house DNS servers and perform zone transfers? At this point, no, we're, we're completely a secondary service, so we require you to have a primary service. We do have uh, one of our registrars that we have partnered with that focuses on DNS, a company called EasyDNS that I would... Uh, I would recommend as a provider uh, for primary DNS. So you could configure and update your zone records with easy DNS. We can do a zone transfer from them. Um, and as well, their underlying DNS infrastructure is uh, AWS. So you would have, in that case, you'd have the benefit of any cost clouds from Amazon or Diesel and Diesel. A uh, question on how long does it take to implement the service? It's pretty quick. So to make the most, most of uh, the customers we talk to have implemented a secondary service. So uh, setting up a, a secondary service, allowing zone transfers and notifies is, you know, takes five to ten minutes. Logging into our portal, adding your name servers and zones takes another five to ten minutes. So we can be up and very quickly. Uh, less than an hour, and then you'll want to do some uh, DNS queries, make sure everything's working, do some updates to your zone, make sure they're propagating, and then at that point uh, you can update the name server records at the registrar. Uh, another question here that's come in, if we have service attacks, will we lose the service or attack will be blocked and the service will not be affected? or we change the DNS name and how long will it take to propagate the change uh, for that service in DNS. So I guess if a um, couple of ways could approach this question. So if there was an attack on a, one of your services or applications, then to do a, if you wanted to redirect to another server that wasn't under attack, an update to a DNS a record would be propagated to us and we would push that out very quickly in a matter of seconds. Um, but there is the problem with using DNS redirection is that there is a time to live on the record so 
typically your records will be cached at recursive servers um, for people who have been looking up your domain and it, it'll take hours or it depends on the TTL for that propagation to, to uh, move. Um, if it's an attack on DNS, the DNS directly, that attack would be on DZone and we would absorb and mitigate that attack. Um, question on, does uh, DZone support IPP, IPv6? So all of our servers have IP, both IPv4 and IPv6, so we can do zone transfers over, over both. As well, we're using bind, so we do answer support IPv6 address records and answer queries for those. I guess that's all the questions. So uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, attending the webinar, and we look forward to dealing with all of the Orion members directly, and we, uh, we provide a high level of support to help you get the service up and running, and then look forward to working with you. And uh, as a thank you for attending, uh, we're going to be sending everyone a uh, Tim Hortons $5 uh, gift card coupon. So thanks a lot. Okay, thanks to Mark and everyone for attending this webinar. Also, don't hesitate to ask myself or any of our business development representatives on how to set up DZone at your connected institution. To reiterate, it's available free of charge. That's Orion's way of improving our technology services to better support Ontario's innovators. So please watch for more upcoming webinars in the new year. And also, fill out the pop-up survey at the end of this webinar, which will help provide us more relevant and educational content to you. And with that, thank you very much for attending, and have a great day.